and welcome to debate 4 on 1 yet another opportunity for us to dissect some of the current affairs issues that are happening in Rwanda and of course our region and beyond my name as always is Eugene and Nangwe. Today we put on the table the issue of Burundi and my guest in studio Katie Nivyavandi, a poet and also actively involved in the women demonstrations that have been happening in Burundi. Welcome to for Debate 4 on 1. Thank you. Thank we you. also have Archie Henry, a journalist with Contact FM. Welcome Archie to Debate 4 on 1. Thank you. Eugene. And Thank you. also with us is an analyst who will help us to dissect or analyze some of the statements we'll be making right here and some that have been made by our leaders and those who have been participating in the peace resolution process of Burundi. Teddy Kaviruka with KPMG. Welcome to Debate 411. Thank you, Eugene. Gentlemen, this past weekend, a lot of activities have happened on the corridors of leadership in terms of the East African community to try and see if they can bring some sense into what is happening in Burundi. And of course, one of the resolutions was the postponement of the elections by one and a half months or not more than that. Maybe a quick reaction from you. We'll start with the lady with us in studio. Do you agree or do you feel that this was actually a necessary move to delay these elections. Mm -hmm. Yes, lady. Mm -hmm. You said gentlemen, so I'd like <laughs> to point out that I am a lady. Yes. <laughs> um, I think Burundian, uh, the Burundian people really feel that the East African community has failed to mm -hmm. address the Burundian crisis appropriately. Um, we were very disappointed by the outcome uh, of the summit yesterday which um, in a nutshell just said, as, as, as you just mentioned, that the election should be postponed for one and a half months. However, failing to address the root of the crisis itself. So um, saying let's have the elections in just a few weeks without addressing the crisis equals to postponing the crisis itself. Mm -hmm. It does not resolve, it doesn't bring, uh, it is asking the Burundian government to um, resolve the crisis and yet the very purpose of having the summit was to um, bring all stakeholders together and find a solution that the government itself has not been able to find. Mm. So um, we are very, very disappointed. Um, I think people in general in Burundi are disappointed and really feel that this is a missed opportunity for to the East African the to solve the issue for the East African community mm. and for the credibility of the East African community to address this issue. Mm. Yes. But actually, they said that uh, the, 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 the groups, the militia groups that are there that are either from the, 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 the sides that are contesting in these elections should be disarmed. Don't you think that this already is an action, uh, uh, you know, by the leaders when they came up with this particular statement? What do you think about what uh, uh, Katie is saying here? No, definitely. I do agree on one point, which is that the root of the crisis, which is the third term, was not actually addressed by the East African heads of state. Um, but there was three points, three recommendations or conclusions from this summit. Uh, there was, of course, uh, um, the, the postponement by 45 days, the disarmament of, of militias. Specifically, the, the conclusion said youth groups affiliated with political parties, mm -hmm. which still remains vague, but uh, it's still, there's still a, um, a point made there. And then a call for all the violence to stop on all ends. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think Burundians are, can be um, disappointed by this, uh, by this outcome. However, it's difficult to see what the East African community could have really changed mm -hmm. uh, in a way. In a way, so you feel probably there wasn't much that they could have even have done? Well, I mean, considering that, you know, the U.S. has suspended training to, to, mil to peacekeepers of Burundi's army, Belgium has menaced to completely cut bilateral aid to Burundi, and you know that more than 50% of Burundi's budget comes from foreign aid, and those donors are some of these countries like Belgium, the EU, and all that hasn't dissuaded Nhudun Ziza from running for a third term. So I'm, I'm just being cynical maybe, but what could the EAC have really changed? What could uh, the EAC uh, but have but changed? But I think Teddy, do you think they, they had any think that they could have even changed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's understand things in their context. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the meeting was not uh, a negotiation platform. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no forum of discussing, is it legitimate for him to go for election or not? You know, it was more or less like there is a crisis. Let's see what we can do in meantime while we are seeking for the long-term solution. Mm -hmm. And I think since the, the date of election was closed, so for me, it makes sense to say, le let's say by time, 
you know, extend the, 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 and then a negotiation will start itself because they didn't go in the details of what both parties are claiming mm. to do. Mm. And uh, th th that's why some of the partners or stakeholders were not even invited to that table because it was not a negotiation. But Katie feels this was a missed opportunity. So no, we are buying time, Katie. Is this appropriate yeah, for this situation? We are absolutely buying time. You cannot uh, expect to resolve a crisis without addressing, you cannot solve the symptoms without uh, addressing the sickness itself. So um, meeting to uh, sort of dilute the, uh, or diffuse the crisis without talking about uh, Murunziza's candidacy mm -hmm. is um, uh, literally a waste of time because his no, candidacy no, ca is... Can I, can I interrupt you, please? Uh, uh, let me just finish okay. my point. The his candidacy is at the root of the current problem. And, and um, I, I think that the East African community missed the opportunity even much earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we're dealing with the consequences of, of a crisis that, ha that happened a few That weeks could have been avoided. That could have been avoided and that the world in general has spoken um, strongly about. Um, and it's unfortunate that the, the, the this community, which is a one people, one destiny, was unable to anticipate the problem mm -hmm. and to begin working on it uh, before we got to this stage. No, mo something to, 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 to emphasize here is does the Burundi stakeholders started the negotiation mm -hmm. which can lead to a compromise either third term or not. That has never started. So you're feeling like the Burundians themselves they need to should have it. done that yeah, definitely particularly and then get themselves. The how how are Burundians things? going to have negotiations about I mean whether he lives or not mm -hmm. when the president himself has, has changed the, um, has attempted to change the constitution. It the happened? parliament turned it down. Okay. What happened afterwards is uh, he was n nominated by, by his party, a nomination that was very controversial. He influenced and put and threatened members of the constitutional court. In Some my who have fled actually already. In mm. my opinion, mm. and that is the real coup. That is the real coup because uh, because you're threatening a public institution. Constitutional court analyzes our constitution. That is our strongest and biggest, the foundation of our nation. And now if you have the executive mandling into the judiciary and influencing members of the, the constitutional court to the level that one of them had to flee mm -hmm. and spoke about threats that they were under to change, uh, to, to legitimize his uh, candidacy, then clearly we, uh, we do not have the right environment to have to, to have a negotiation to have a negotiations mm -hmm. when you have a trial and there is evidence that a trial that's been misconduct in the trial when you have a, a vote and there is evidence that the vote has been tampered with what do you do mm -hmm. you start over you do not go on with that process when you know it has been flawed from the beginning Achi, yeah. um, uh, teddy says that the process should actually start from burundi mm -hmm. so that at least others like the esc can now pick up from there she says the process already seem to have already started but the, the environment is not conducive for that. You have also said that the East Africa, what more could they have done anyway? So do you agree with what uh, Teddy is saying and of course what Katie brings out on, on the debate today? Some, some valid points were made, but I, I do think it's important to keep in mind that the mess uh, that we're seeing today in Burundi comes from a political impasse that the Burundian leaders have, have created. And this impasse, so basically these Burundian leaders have made it effectively impossible for foreign actors to really have an influence or an impact on the third term question because the the civil uh, the ruling party CNDD FDD is inflexible does not want to see anyone else than president Hurunziza and civil society uh, doesn't want to see him run as well so it, th the political impasse that the, the Burundian government has created is almost impossible to deal with for the for for foreign actors. We do have to keep that. Do you agree, Katie? Do I you do think this, this 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 is true? Not. This is actually an opportunity mm -hmm. for the East African community to uh, to step in and uh, and address this issue. Mm -hmm. And if the East African community is unable to to resolve a crisis at that level, actually, as I mentioned, when. Um, there was evidence that the constitutional court was threatened to make that judgment. If the East African community was not able to step in at that point and solve, anticipate the problem and, and, and solve it, 
what is the point of having a community of sure. state? Yeah. Uh, Burundi is the smallest, it has the smallest population in the East African community. It only represents 3% uh, of its uh, economy. If the community is unable to solve this problem of Burundi, how will it solve the problem of another member state? Mm -hmm. uh, there is clearly, this is a clear failure of, of, of the community. And I do not think that uh, Burundians le Burundian leaders have created this impasse. One person has created this impasse. That's, I meant and the ruling party. That's what I meant by the leaders. You exactly. know, the people at the very top. But not the people. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course we, not. Are, we are held hostage by, by this Ache, you trying to swallow your own leader. words. What, what are you trying to say here? Because she says, you're saying that it's, it's, it's the people, the ruling party, but she insists it's only one person who's, who's created no, this. I, I, I think when I, when I meant the Burundian leaders created this impasse, I meant you know, the people um, at the very top of the ruling party, basically, that really decided for Nhurun Ziza to, to but run. But, but That's but what I meant by the leaders. But remember, some, some, some leaders within the same parties, they signed for not a third term of for course. him. Yeah, yeah. So meaning, we, we can't even say the, the, the whole party was yeah, yeah. supporting. I, I meant so his inner circle, his clique. Now, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's, let's bring you in on the issue of what could the East African community <coughs> have done. Uh, she says it's a lost opportunity for solving this particular issue, uh, you know, anticipating for the crisis and at least coming up with a, with a solution to it. So let's look practically. What could they have done I, I at this meeting the, the to solve this the issue? The quick support would have been a kick-off a negotiation process because, you know, internally they completely failed to meet and discuss and, and solve their issues. So East Africa would have helped them to kick off the negotiation, at least they start preliminaries, like what are we negotiating, who is on the table, and then from there maybe the, the bigger international community can support that process. Negotiations, course, Katie, f who and who, between who and who? There are, no, I mean, no, the there are different there are forces. No negotiations, so. <laughs> um, uh, necessary and this is not a case for this is you do not have two parties that are fighting you're not having a rebellion that's fighting against the ruling government uh, what you have is one individual who is determined to uh, rule which uh, I think it's not one individual because he has the, the entire forces behind him mm -hmm. so it's a system because but it's but he's, at the top. he's at the top, he's right? at the of top course. Yes. why, why all these people are behind him he why? is at the top and um, uh, I believe the, the party could have been able to it has many capable people who would have been able to run but you, we are now being held hostage by um, an individual, a regime that wants to stay on despite its uh, disastrous uh, governance in the past 10 years and um, you have this regime that is uh, that is forcing itself literally uh, um, uh, on the people of Burundi and the people of Burundi have now no avenue left mm. to, pro to protest this and to say no because the very institutions that are supposed to protect and to speak for the people have been tampered with. Mm -hmm. So um, it is not a case of negotiations, it is a case of bringing back um, the regime and the, and the president Hurunziza to his senses. It's not a question of negotiating between the people and, and, and the regime. Yeah, it's, but it's, you it's, you it's seem to want to validate your point. You seem to want to validate what I you I said. I think the whole essence of, of, of negotiation mm. is what the way forward because, you know, the Hurunziza regime has taken a position which they seem not to be flexible. And you know, like uh, the, the civil society and the, the other party want him to go. So we have two different blocks which have to negotiate and find the common solution. Either we extend the, the maybe there is a transition period where they are negotiating, or one of parties change his position. Mm -hmm. At during this one and a half months, uh, you know, period that has been put in place, what should we be expecting to be happening, Archie, during this period? Do we expect to see what he says, yeah. negotiations during this yeah. process. Do we expect to see, you know, continued campaigns by Ngruziza? What, what, what should we expect during this one and a half period that has been extended? Well, I think that's the hope of, of East African heads of state, right? Mm -hmm. That's the hope of, of giving these extra 45 days to perhaps give a chance for the political dialogue to actually really commence. Because, of course, there, the dialogue has... Is, has not been working. I mean, of course, the two sides are inflexible. Yeah. So I think that's what the, the East African leaders are hoping for, an, I an increased chance for dialogue. The ruling party is going to keep campaigning. The civil society is going to keep protesting. I don't see any change to that. 
uh, and we can be skeptical and see that the violence will actually continue. But something that was not addressed by uh, the heads of state in the summit in Dar es Salaam was the question of, of for example, independent media, mm -hmm. which still remains unaddressed in Burundi. You have four independent radio and TV stations, uh, Bonesha, Isanganiro, RPA, Renaissance, that are still off air uh, since the attacks that happened about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And that's an important uh, element for the civil, civil society. So you know? within this one and a, half and, and a half month period, you expecting at least something to be done to sort out that issue of that's the Well, that's what the civil media. society w would like, for mm -hmm. example, uh, right, mm -hmm. if I'm correct, for the independent, not only the independent media, I mean, your main aim is, is the third third term question to be resolved, but mm -hmm. that's among some of your objectives, right? Um, yes, w when you say that, the, uh, that this is the hope of the East African community to have the situation resolved, I'd like to add that it's an empty hope. Mm -hmm. It's a hope without wheels, it's a hope without any, any, any fire, because it has not been given the tools to resolve mm -hmm. the crisis. It's basically telling the people, the people of Burundi, Go back to the situation you've been in for the, for next, the next one month and a half. And a half. Mm. Exactly. Um, how are we going to have to uh, create a conducive environment for elections when opposition members are all in hiding or have fled the country? When we have no independent media uh, operate operational it, as. You just mentioned uh, when you have protests going on every day on the street when the economy is currently sinking uh, because banks and offices are not working, People, children have been out of school for a month now, uh, foreign currency is becoming very scarce to find, basic services are not being provided. We cannot expect to have a conducive en environment to uh, prepare for the elections because this environment is not changing. Nothing has changed to make that environment different. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we are not expecting that. What, di what this is telling the people of Burundi is you are on your own. This mm -hmm. is the message that mm -hmm. the Burundian people have gotten. It's saying you are now on your own and you have to solve your um, issues, issues on your own. And that is a very dangerous position. Mm -hmm. that is and the East African community has to own the responsibility of this decision because uh, what happens from now on is, is basically the result of a people who are desperate for change and have, been, have tried all avenues mm -hmm. but have been failed. Mm -hmm. A hope without I wheels, a hope without fire. This is what she, I, I, she feels. Like Do you I agree with I that? I totally agree. In fact, some of the recommendation was the, to disarm those uh, militias. By who? who, who, would, who exactly. That? that was my, my next question. Mm. Who, is, who is going to do it and when and how? Mm. That one was From not your own analysis, what do you think or who do you think should be able to do that? Uh, it should be the same people who have recommended to do it. So East Africa should, you know, have like, you know, this the, the, the standby f brigade should come in and at least help the civilian to get the peace. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, start tracking those uh, uh, armed group. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's still wha what happened to homegrown solutions, solutions <laughs> to, to homegrown problems? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I'd yes. like to, to, to jump in on that because mm -hmm. the East African community is a, is a rare and very unique um, example and model. It was built on the, on the former dream of Pan-Africanism. It was built on the dream that Africans can solve solutions themselves. And this is what we are always uh, saying uh, as in Africa in, in general. Um, and we, we have been able to come together as a community of these five countries um, with a vision of going forward. That, that, has, that has been the drive. That has been the dream of the community. Now we are here you have one country in that community that wants to go forward. The, the wish and the hope of the people of Burundi is to move forward. The Burundiza regime is taking us backwards. It's, it's, um, it is uh, denying the Arusha peace accords which have brought us peace, which are a social contract which brought us together and, and, and brought us peace. And so it's, going, it, it's taking us back. We are now on the bridge of a civil war. But, but we, uh, had time, we had time to see this coming. But exactly. what happened? We what happened? What went wrong? Why, why didn't we look for possible solutions? Even as Burundians, 
during the process of, of, of the forthcoming elections. Mm -hmm. Probably, we didn't we see this coming, Archie? Do you yeah. think this was overlooked and nobody thought about it until we got to this point of having refugees and, and killings and people flee? No, absolutely. I think we, we saw this coming for a long time. The governments in the region saw this coming. Even Tanzania, which is today accused by Burundian civil society of playing sort of a double game uh, on this question of, of Burundi, even Tanzania was the first state of the region to make a public statement against the third term for Nhuru Nziza. That was all the way back in March. That was even before the third term candidacy was official. So Tanzania saw this coming, and, and even uh, the statement of, of, of um, President Kikwete was, you know, if he runs for a third term, it will create instability. So he saw this coming. Uh, all the, the region saw this coming. The UN saw this coming. There's no questions about that. So, and now, now we're stuck here with a, with a dilemma. So where do we move from here? Civil society. But, but just to, c to come back really quickly on the question of this summit, mm -hmm. I'm still curious to know. I agree some things could have improved, of course, and 45-day extension could actually give way to more time for violence, uh, to more protests, etc. But what specifically c could the EAC have, have said in the statement you know, aside from making things less vague, that could have been an improvement. Less vague statements about the militias too, who disarms the militias, which militias. It stated there are multiple militias. What are the names of the militias? Aside from making things less vague, what have been some specific things it could have done to stop a third term? That's what I'm asking myself. Mm. Mm. The, the, well, the very first one was to recognize that a, that a third term by Nguyen Ziza puts uh, the Burundi and the region in danger of a civil war and, and violence. So being able to recognize that, that has not been, that has not transpired in any of the recommendations of the summit. It is completely, it's blatantly ignored. And um, notwithstanding the fact that our president did not show up mm -hmm. for the summit itself. <coughs> We're going to be looking deeper into that in our next break. Uh, but for now, okay. I would like us to look at, at these signs, if, if we never saw them. And of course, this, this attempted coup that happened uh, uh, in Burundi, would it have been good for Burundi? Would it have s helped at least to solve the problems that we are having today? Maybe I'll bring you in and then Katie will come in and then Archie. So tell me, would, uh -huh. do you think that the coup, the attempted coup that took place, would it have solved the problem? Let me ma make a statement before I go back to mm -hmm. the coup. Mm -hmm. uh, I think something concrete would have been da you know, de done or said in, in the e ESC head of state meeting. Maybe they would have said uh, negotiation should start by this date and these are the people. So at least there is that push from, from outside. But Katie feels no, there's no, 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 no negotiation course, because who she, is, who is it's how people negotiating but I with think who? Since we have two blocks, mm -hmm. then we dialogue needs to be, to start. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, uh, on top of, of, of the, the militia disarmament, you know, we see in medias and TVs and everywhere, civilian being killed because in fact, there is no two forces. There is civilian, you know, or civil society, just as an umbrella, against the government. Mm -hmm. And this, the civil society is not armed. So meaning we have civilian who are saying no to something. So you're trying to so say, Katie, should be able to sit down with the people from from Nguzza's side and have a negotiation. No, 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 no. Would you I, I, I would as expect... As a civil society, no, no, no. would you guys go on the table I would expect the, the to East Africa mm. to, send, to send a force to, to protect the civilian. Because we have civilian against another you know the military and so police and people who are armed mm -hmm. so i would expect the east africa to say okay we are sending a peace a peacekeeping force to to protect civilian mm. to but um, you're still running away from the issue of the negotiations okay. because i want us to really understand what it means by these negotiations kitty and your team from the civil society would you sit down with Nguzi's aside to have a negotiation and what would you even be negotiating the United Nations has started, um, ha is attempting to start a negotiation process which includes uh, both the government and the civil society. So they were still in the early stages and the civil society had attended. But now with um, uh, the assassination of one of the opposition leaders uh, just last week, the civil society pulled out. And its message is clear. It's how are we negotiating with, with the... Um, uh, with, with the government that is uh, terrorizing and killing its own people. There is no way that we can negotiate. And, and the points of negotiations are, are so uh, clear and so opposite that it's 
there is it's it's an impasse. It's just postponing again the problem. So this so regime is not stepping down. Mm, mm. The the people of Burundi will not is, are not accepting Runziza again. Mm. So um, there is no point to negotiate. So what when you pull out, how do you help the situation? There's no what, way what, forward. What there, there is no way forward. There's an impasse. There is an impasse. Sitting down, people can sit down in conference rooms and drink coffee for for uh, two, three months and claim to be negotiating when we are not moving forward. That is not what we want. Mm -hmm. What is needed was a clear message to this regime that it continuing, it going on, threatens the security of the people of Burundi and of the region in general. Mm -hmm. This is what I don't get from the community. The inability to anticipate that this is a civil war in the making that will affect all countries in the region. It has already begun to affect the region by the influx of refugees. Now you will have, it may uh, impact the region if you now have rebel groups mm -hmm. forming themselves mm -hmm. and that is a very high likelihood now. And then it will spill over to the region. It will spill over. Yes. They all they will begin forming themselves in the region or spill over to the region. This impacts on the entire region. Then you have the economic aspect. Mm -hmm. Just the other day a, gren a grenade exploded in front of the K uh, KCB Kenya Commercial, Bank. K Kenya Commercial Bank headquarters. Uh, this is a Kenyan um, um, bank, a Kenyan investment. Right now the economy is down. All investment that has been made by the region into the country is now being uh, is now going down the drain. So uh, um, I fail to understand how the uh, leaders of the of the community are not seeing this as an and as a regional problem and are failing to address this when they still have time. Mm -hmm. Now we are running out of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's a, a, a repeated. It. It's an, an, an a great failure on the people of Burundi, but also on the institution of the East African community itself. Mm -hmm. Talking of time, we're now taking a very short break because we're just onto our time for a fast break. But of course, the question that I would like to ask you, gentlemen and lady, is if you were Pierre Nkurunziza, at one point you left your country to go for a negotiation process. In, in a neighboring country and while you were there you were told that you had been overthrown and for a second time you called to go for another negotiation would you have gone Katie would you have gone when you return we'll be looking at that issue <laughs> of the absence of Nuruziza at the Sunday's meeting ladies and gentlemen of course it is time to take a very fast break right here on debate four on one more discussions more conversations on the Burundi situation and what role the region has played and if it has done it well is what we're talking about today on the program do stay with us Welcome back 
This is debate four and one. The hashtag you're using is just that. You use the hashtag debate four and one. We'll follow up on your tweets and of course read them if we may or if we have uh, some time to do that. But of course today on the program we're doing about the crisis in Burundi and the East African community's way of handling the issue. Do you believe that they have done enough to help the people of Burundi? And of course in studio my panelist Kitty Nizabandi who is from Burundi currently in Rwanda but you've been actively being involved in the women protests that have been happening in Burundi. We also have Archie Henry from Contact News Review uh, team and we have an analyst Teddy Kaberuka in the program. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the next session. When we went for the break, we are looking at the issue of the absence of Pierre Nguziza from Sunday's meeting and, and whether it was legitimate for him to be missing in action or not. And those who are arguing from his side of view are like, okay, who do you, do you want me to leave this place for? Did you want me to go again and, you know, another coup attempt happens? Do you think if it was you, would you have gone for this summit? It's hard to put myself in his shoes. I mean, it, the whole context come with it, so it's difficult. But just a clarification on, mm. what, on what you were saying. The official reason for him not attending was not about the coup. He was campaigning. He was campaigning. Mm -hmm. So still, I think, you know, that was that could have been interpreted as still, a, you know, maybe an insult to, to leaders of the region that were there. You know, if you're campaigning, I mean, this is a, 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 a discussion to resolve the crisis in your country. Mm -hmm. So regardless of his reason for not being there, you know, I think he sent some representatives, but it, it, it showed that he was not maybe fully serious about, about, the, um, about the discussion. This discussion. Katie, if it was you, wouldn't you look for an excuse not to appear there because of what happened once bitten, twice shy? Tell me about this. I would not even be in this position if mm -hmm. it was me. Mm -hmm. I would put the country first, the interest of the nation before my own. And I would not be in that position. But of course, um, Nguranziza is different. I am not Nguranziza. Mm -hmm. And um, he has demonstrated throughout this crisis that he is not serious about solving it. I'm sure you have seen pictures all over of uh, him playing football um, with great passion while people were dying on the streets, were being shot or tear gassed by the police. Uh, one of those people is me. I have been tear gassed by police and yet we uh, protested uh, peacefully. We came as women walking peacefully to make our voices heard. We came with white handkerchiefs, uh, we were singing our national anthem, we presented no threat, and it was a women-only affair. We were met by a police that was brutal to us, and that tear-gassed us and brought water cannons at us. This is the kind of regime that you're dealing with. This is a regime that is shooting protesters, so the ability for the Burundian people to make their voices heard is now non-existent. Mm -hmm. So this is not uh, a regime that is uh, willing or serious uh, about resolving this crisis. This is a regime that's saying, I'm going forward, whether you I like knock, it or not. Uh, whether you like it or not, whether I break and uh, bring this country to the grave or not, I am going forward. Mm -hmm. And this is not the leadership that takes us forward. This is not the leadership that Africa needs today. Uh, Murunziza is exactly what Africa doesn't need today. Mm -hmm. And this is why the people of Burundi uh, will not give up. We are saying no, we want better for ourselves mm -hmm. and we will get better for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Teddy, if you're in his shoes, I know most of you right now, not so many people would want to be in Pierre Nguziza's shoes I at all. Like so if you were in those shoes, shoes <laughs> in his soccer <laughs> shoes that, that he plays, you know, like, like Katie has said, would you have gone for this summit because of what happened the previous time that you were away? I think as things were evolving, it was a good time for Nguziza to join the region and discuss and, and maybe seek for advices because w what is true, he know the position of, of, of the East African head of state because, you know, the Tanzanian president made his statement on the third term, the, uh, the president of Rwanda has made his statement, so he knows at least what is in the, m the mind of, of uh, his colleague head of state. So, because anyway, something will happen, w him being there or not. So him participating to that discussion, maybe he would have suggested something which can solve the issue and then have a peaceful exit for him. Because at some point, he will need to exit. If he wants or not, he will go. Mm -hmm. you know? 
and the best way to go is to go with support of the region. So you think he, if you were yeah. if you were in his shoes, you'd have gone. I would have gone been there. in Tanzania in Dar es Salaam. Definitely. Right. So yeah. the fact that not so much has been said on this third term issue, none of or or, or very few if it is a statement coming as, as an East African community decision, not many have said it openly and said, Nguziza, you need to step down and forget about the issue of third term. Most of them, if it's a statement coming from the region, is let's postpone these elections as we discuss or as we negotiate, as we find a pro proper way. Do you feel that there's some failure by the region by not really dealing with this issue face to face, the issue of the third term? I think when we talk about failure of <coughs> failure of the region, we should look, I think it's not a unified failure. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a difference between different states wh who maybe lobbied for in Hurunzizao during the summit in Dar. But we're talking of one voice, one destination, East Africa. So we sure, have to speak but for example, voice, no? when you look at different statements made by different countries of the region, mm -hmm. you have only Tanzania and Rwanda that have been very vocal. Um, and then you have Uganda, which has been completely silent. The only official statement I think Uganda made was to say we will not send troops in Burundi. That's the official, not condemning, condemning even the violence, um, none of that. And, and Kenya has also been s slightly uh, vague in their statements. So I think it's, it's, it's a difference of different countries with that within the region. Uh, and then that obviously has an impact then on, on when the region as a whole needs to say something because there's difference of opinions. Mm. Wh why do you think, Kitty, we are not having a one voice? saying that no to that third term because it is going to cause one, two, three, four, five issues as a region. Why, don't we, why, why, do, why do you think we're not hearing that as a single uh, voice of, of the region? Mm, probably because it's not a s there is not a single um, position. And again, I go back to the fact that this is a failure of... This speaks about the nature of the community itself and how strong or how um, uh, divided perhaps the community is because it's unable to come forward. Uh, I, I believe that if that statement hasn't um, come out, it's not because it was not addressed by the member states, but rather because there's no consensus uh, uh, on, on it by all the states. So uh, this speaks about the ability of the community to come together with one statement um, and th this is probably why mm -hmm. but uh, ag again it is um, it surprises me regardless of what any any nation can have as as national interest or or views uh, it, it it baffles me that it is unable to see this beyond even just the third mandate itself but for the danger that it represents uh, for the region mm -hmm. Uh, you you said earlier on on the issue of negotiations because this is another area that that we need to also look at because when you say that we have a window of one and a half months so questions are still trickling in what do we do within this period of time to save the situation that is happening in Burundi but you came up with an idea that we need to be seeing at least some negotiations going on which we need to have a clear view of w what exactly were you meaning on this issue of negotiations when you talk of the negotiations who do you want to see on this table of negotiations uh, uh, you see there are two different opinion which I think need to be tabled discuss and look you know see the way forward because the two blocks seem to have their position and they don't want to change it and since you negotiate you put your your, your opinion on the table and everyone and then you negotiate you find a compromise in the between mm -hmm. and now what so far we've seen two blocks two different opinion and no none this of is them civil society and, and, yes, the, and the current yes, government yes. Mm. maybe we can see something like have it another transitional phase of like Maybe yeah. two years. Would, would this and help? Would this help? I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking out of, of my mind. You're so thinking out of your mind. Yeah. But, but it what it, does it depends on the context. When you say there are two positions, we, f we seem to forget that one of those positions is illegal. I agree. Being illegal doesn't mean that it's not a position. Yes. Because let's talk facts. Then what is there. the East African community doing no, about the illegality? Something, something which we need to consider in this discussion is there are things which uh, fall under the national uh mandates you know things on governance i don't think east africa can stand up and say you president you ha your leadership is bad you know you have corruption you have this step out that's not the, the the mandate of east africa i don't think as a block 
or if we've seen like uh, European Union discussing some issues cross border thing but they never intervene in na- and s- s- there are some some topics which they say okay this is national deal with it seek for help but we can help you and that is what Katie is wondering and, 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 how does and that I help think the they situation think of, of a third, third term mm. I, it's a national discussion which need to be solved there if they seek they want advice then they can go to the east africa Kitty. but, but it has been that's exactly the point yeah, but that discussion has mm-hmm. happened mm-hmm. it has been brought to our parliament parliament rejected it so the discussion has happened parliament has rejected that proposal now um, uh, however still um and has gone forward with it even though the parliament had rejected it i think we need to make this uh, this facts very very clear mm-hmm. now it has gone forward and has threatened i don't know if you really uh, understand yeah, what yeah, it yeah, is yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. threaten the constitutional court to the point that one of the judges the vice president of the court has to flee the country fearing for his what life. What more negotiations then do you need if, 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 if these kind of issues that Katie is bringing on board have already taken place? Have we, reti- have we really got into that point you feel that now we have to go to the ESC? Because for so you, you feel th- this yes. is a national issue yes. that the East African community as a bloc has no mandate to talk about. Of course, there is. Of course, we need to acknowledge that East Africa doesn't have all the structures in place because we are seeing the head of states, uh, you know, meeting, but we don't see the the, the civil society platform taking the lead because Kitty. this is ano- another arm of she, she East doesn't really f- from her look in the no, face no. she doesn't <laughs> really feel like you you're really <laughs> giving her true representation no. of what because been going the East Africa w- what you know the head of state are discussing about their colleague who is you know maybe one of them will be the next uh, candidate to be discussed on but if we would have seen the east african civil society organization also organizing themselves having a, po- a common position maybe it would have helped so you and then I lobby for it mm. I because d- I, I mean it's about, about we are talking about diplomacy here and you know diplomacy is not like black and white the other parameters which you but can't but even but see on the but table. let us take let us um be um uh, honest enough to look at the issues at hand in the face Um, that issue the national platform has been addressed the issue has been put for to the burundian people it has been uh, rejected now uh, what it is not it's no longer a civil society issue we are now at a state where public institutions are being threatened by one of the member states. And the very purpose of the East African community is to have strong institutions. This is where we, this is the vision of the community and this is where I see ourselves as Africa going. We have to get to the point where institutions are stronger than the individuals who run them. Mm -hmm. So now when you see a public institution uh, as, as, as important and as crucial as a constitutional court being held hostage by the executive in a member state this is no longer a civil society issue this is not something to discuss about and 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 ponder and and have endless debates mm. this is a s- very serious matter that threatens the the, le- the legitimacy the, um, the stability of one of the member states and therefore of the entire region mm-hmm. and we yeah. have to be able to come I forward and address these issues hands-on then I I if that's the case then we are even beyond the East, East African community and have th- something like another a uh, court to Which bring it may be the ICC or another co- East African court. But there is an East African is court. Yeah, of justice. Yeah, yes. no. Which but no. I think the question I, I just <laughs> wanted to ask Katie yeah. is, you know, I agree that the, the East African community could have done more, but what I'm questioning is could it have changed something? When you look, if, you know, for example, it had come together with a unified voice saying the third term of Nhunziza is illegal, you have already the United States that said that, Belgium that said that, yeah. threatening to cut all the aid. Yeah. And you see the determination of the ruling party, specifically of, of Nhurunziza and his clique, to continue. The, you know, they, they, it doesn't distract them at all. So I think that's the concern at hand. And that's why I, I think I agree with, with you on, on the point of dialogue. Even though we can have doubts on that dialogue and how that dialogue is it really working, but we can see that foreign pressure and foreign mediation has not been dissuading the the president Hulunziza from going for a third term. So no, this Archie, is I, 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 allow me to yes, jump in. Yes. I disagree. Uh, the f- the the fact that you anticipate that uh, that pressure will not be effective 
cannot stop you from 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 doing it. You do not stop acting because you 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 will not not speak because you think that you will not be heard. Speaking is very important. Those foreign states that spoke as well perhaps have been doing so, I think, like everyone else, like the region, you know, behind closed doors. So they probably knew that Nguruziza was going uh, forward. But it is still important to voice that clearly. And now what this has done, uh, th because the Burundian government came out with a statement afterwards, what this has done is has legitimized Nguruziza's regime, who are now saying the third mandate is no longer a question on the table. The East African community has spoken. It is no longer an issue. So this is the gravity uh, uh, of, of this. So you this feel summit. that now whatever is happening, the statements coming out from the East African community are even making the situation worse? Of course. Now the government is saying and Nguruziza is saying well, we have the summit of the East African community, which is the, 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 the region that, uh, the closest region that we are in and, and that has the strongest influence, and they have not said anything Concerning about the third, third mandate. Term. So the third term is not an issue. Now they no longer will allow <laughs> any discussion on, on, on that issue. And that means that um, the, the way that they will deal with the protesters on the ground, the way that they will deal with the population, I is going to be even more violent than it was before. So um, it has given it extra power. So where do we go from here? Because I would asked earlier on, on the issue of the coup, which when the, the attempted coup that, that, that took place, when, when the news broke of this particular attempted coup, there, was, there seemed to be some joy from certain quarters that, wow, finally someone has come to take charge of whatever is going on in Burundi and maybe now things will go back to normal. Mm -hmm. But eventually it all turned around and Nguruziza was back, just like Terminator when he said, I'll be back, and he was back, and back on the seat. And again, people are like, oh my God, we're now again in problems. So this attempted coup that took place, would it have been good for Burundi if it was successful, Katie? It's unfortunate that we would have to come to that. It's unfortunate, but what the people felt, they felt liberated. I was on the streets when the coup was announced. People jumped from all over. All kinds of people uh, from various, all different backgrounds were in the streets celebrating. Why? Because they have felt oppressed. They felt liberated. They felt that for once, somebody was saving them. Now, coups, of course, no one would, would, would support a coup in a democratic state. Coups do, do, not, coups do not make sense in a, in a, in a state that uh, exercises rule of law. But when you are in a lawless state, as we are today, what other alternatives are left for the people? I think there were people looking to the army uh, to be able to fill the void the institutional void uh, uh, that has been created mm -hmm. and, and that is why they were, they were extremely happy and therefore uh, very disappointed when the coup failed. When it, when it failed. Uh, but it is, it is a very, very sad um, uh, time and moment for us as a country and as a region for us to have to get there because there should be other mechanisms in place to protect the people in situations like this. Mm. Initially, uh, you say the ESC seems to be, you know, reluctant or not tackling the issue as it is. Uh, there, is there seems to be a deadlock when it comes to the government position, the civil society's position. And now, uh, Katie says, getting to a coup would be very, you know, like a last option or, or a situation which not so many of us would love to get there. But in a situation where nobody is really taking charge, then, you know, they, they, there seems to be no option. So, actually, do you think that this is the direction that probably we may have to end up to if, 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 if all things or all factors remained constant? You mean seeing another coup? Yes. Honestly, I think the, the chance of a coup, right, another coup right now is very low because this coup, uh, this attempted coup or failed coup or whatever you want to call it, has really taken away uh, the first uh, line of enemy of the president that was in the army. So a lot of generals uh, were in op also in opposition to Nhuru Nziza. There was not a unified army behind him from the beginning. So this coup put all the coup plotters or the putschists, as you call them, have either been put in jail or have fled. So now you have it seems less top generals there in the army that could do a coup or that could even be willing to do a coup because most of them uh -uh. are gone or are in jail. But I think what we risk seeing as this 45-day uh, period of election delay, we're going to see protests continue. After the coup, 
the failed coup, um, we were asking ourselves, well, will this civil society have the courage to come back again? Will they not be scared? Uh, will they have the energy? And we saw that they did. The, civil, the Burundian civil society is very determined in that way. They start like a diesel, they start slowly, and then they build up momentum. This decision yesterday in Dar, I think, also hurt the civil society, but we'll see them coming back. Instead of another coup, what I, what I could see happening is this degenerating into perhaps a civil war. This is unfortunate to say, but uh, you know, maybe civilians will begin to arm themselves as a mean of self-defense uh, against the police. Um, that, that's a possibility. Or you could see opposition politicians uh, that are increasingly frustrated by the context and the deadlock and the impasse. Uh, they would want to arm their supporters. So is, this, is this a true representation of what you think could no, be happening in the coming I days? I don't think we have another, another coup because we've seen Buyoya doing coup twice. So it's not uh, a scenario to exclude. It's also possible. Yeah, but it's Especially because, you know, people have been maybe scared to say coup is not possible. But uh, even though there was an attempt, but they didn't succeed, but it was possible. So somehow the, 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 the ruling part has been shaked, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, people can try this and maybe it can work if we plan ourselves better. Mm -hmm. Because from, from the joy of people, you know, it's a good sign that, oh, even if I do this coup, then I have so many supporters, supporters. you know, on the, on, on the side of civilians. Mm -hmm. a and maybe I'll deal with other issues of the coup, but at least I have the, the, all the civilians be, you know, behind you, behind me. K yes. Kitty, look, you have key opposition figures that would, would be contesting in this election, not really, uh, 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 you know, actively out there right now. Most of them, uh, one of them being killed, others, you know, fleeing the country. You have uh, an electoral commission which, you know, you have its commissioners, some of them fleeing and not being around there. Absolutely. Where do we go from here then, you know, because even if we were to say, now, fine, let's have elections, you know, after the one and a half months we've talked, what do we do? Do you expect these people to come back? Do you expect to have a free and fair electoral process? Because if you have police people who are killing or shooting, as you said, tear gassing you, gassing you and all those kind of things, where do we go from here when we have this situation at hand? Mm. It's impossible to have um, um, free and fair elections in this environment right now. And we are degenerating now into um, a sort of lawless uh, state into a very dangerous situation which is approaching a civil war as Arching said. We are now into a state where people are being assassinated or uh, there are assassination attempts. As you know, one of the leaders of the opposition was assassinated just um, uh, yesterday, uh, uh, sorry, on Sunday. Um, the uh, bishop mm -hmm. uh, of the Catholic bishop, and you know the Catholic Church has been very vocal against this uh, third mandate. Uh, there was an assassination attempt on, on, on the archbishop of Bujumbura. Uh, of Bujumbura. Mm -hmm. Yes, he actually left mass. He was in the middle of mass and left because he received... Um, word that it was an assassination attempt and and it was it was in case so we this is the environment that we are in uh, people being now targeted on the streets opposition leaders unable to campaign unable to even come to the streets protesters being shot at um, this is a disastrous situation this is a country that's that's really sinking and before the eyes of the community. And this is why I want to come back to this. Uh, the East African community leaders have to understand that what they have done is to truly clip the wings of the Burundian people. They have uh, robbed us of our dreams of a better Burundi, and they have missed a crucial opportunity to bring change in the region, to stabilize the region, and to strengthen the community itself. Yes. Let me not move away now from the issue of blame game, and now let's sit on those chairs where these leaders of the East African community usually sit. In less than 60 seconds, I'm going to give you a chance. If you are sitting there on that position at the East African Community Secretary, what is it that you would have done differently? Right now? Yes. <laughs> That's a difficult question. Uh, wow. Now, I, I would definitely take into account the root causes of this crisis, first of all. I think that's something that, wouldn't, that was not addressed. Uh, and the root cause of this crisis is the third term uh, attempt uh, run by Nkurun Ziza, which has been confirmed, which is official. And I would definitely put that at the center of the discussion and I would say, OK, is there any way to make a compromise between uh, the, govern the ruling party and civil society or the opposition? As difficult as that sounds to make a compromise, maybe 
we can make one. For example, through a transitional government or a government of national unity in which Nhulunziza perhaps stays but is not the only leader. Maybe, uh, there's a j maybe there are options out there that, that the civil society and the ruling party could, could come to uh, accept. So, so that's what you'd have done. I would focus on the, the other options. Teddy, what would you have done if you were sitting on that position of the East African community heads of state or secretariat where they make these decisions to save Burundi? What would you have done? Uh, first of all, I'll make clear my position on the third term. What would like you say? Either I support I, or I don't support. Would you support it? No, I wouldn't support because okay. I'm a democratic person. Mm -hmm. I believe in democracy. When time is, when it's your time to go, you have to go. Uh, secondly, the, the thing of militia should have been discussed and have proper plan to eradicate it because this is danger for the East African itself. So you'd put it on the table, Definitely. the issue of militias and yes. the third term. Yes. Katie, what would you do differently <laughs> if you were sitting right there in their position? I would ask in a very clear term and make it a very, very clear position that Nguren Ziza must step down. I would put pressure on him to step down and would not give him an option of running again. This is uh, not possible because of the danger that he represents uh, for, uh, for the region and for the country. Um, I would, at this stage, I would bring in uh, a coalition of forces. I would bring a force in to protect the civilians who are being shot at daily on the street and to prevent any further violence and massacres that may happen. We, are, we have clear indications that we have an armed militia. The statement of the summit recognizes that we have armed militia, but is not say doing anything about it. How, how can we recognize that we have a militia that's armed and ready to kill and not do anything about so it? So would I, would I would intervene. I would bring in forces to protect the civilians. I would have the um, uh, independent media reopened and I would have um, a clear transitional period that brings back all actors together without Nguren Ziza and, and prepare now for, a free for, for an environment f to have free, fair, transparent elections. Super. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we had for, for Debate 4 on 1 today. We are hoping that at least our views have been had with whatever or whichever institutions that need to sort out the whole issue in, in Burundi. And of course, we are anticipating or watching very closely what happens in Burundi. So thank you so much for being on the show. You're welcome. You. There you go. Debate 4 on 1 comes to an end. Just for today, we're still on again on Friday right here on Rwanda Television. My name is always is Eugene. And then well, let's keep the conversation going. The hashtag is debate411. See you again next time.